Regardless of what CRA was, today it is a costly and redundant anachronism that has contributed to our economic crisis and still enables certain activist groups to essentially shake down financial institutions, harming credit and job opportunities for all Americans. Federal Reserve data has shown that well over 99% of all banks are already in full compliance with CRA, yet we know that community banks can spend up to $90,000 a year just to prove compliance. Again, it begs the question, are we simply having banks pay all these great sums of money to prove that they're doing something they would do anyway? Do you really have to force a bank to make a profitable, credit-worthy loan? And if not, are we forcing them to make loans to a universe of people that they may not otherwise make? And these loans may not be financially sound loans. And indeed, they may be loans that help, contributed, help contribute to our economic crisis. And when we talk about CRA loans contributing to the economic crisis, uh, I have long contended it wasn't the size of the loans, it wasn't the number of loans, but it was one more precedent where the United States government put its imprimatur on a system that did not raise up the economic opportunities of the borrower, but instead lessened the credit standards of the lender. Thus, it played a role. Also, every community banker I speak to tells me that equal or second only to BSA, CRA is their most costly compliance matter. If they simply had the money that they are spending on compliance cost, they would instead be able to capitalize at least several small business, businesses in their community and create hundreds of jobs. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to yield myself an additional 30 seconds. Absolutely. Shouldn't jobs be the number one priority of this Congress? Clearly it is not, though. Under the policies of Speaker Pelosi and President Obama, almost four million of our countrymen have lost their jobs since the President has been inaugurated. We have the highest unemployment rate we've had in a quarter of a century, not to mention a tripling of the national debt. One thing our committee could do that would take a positive step in creating more jobs in America is simply to repeal CRA. CRA is about making capitalism work safely and soundly, soundly for the little guy and gal, not just about Wall Street and, and, and making the market work for Wall Street and big banks. To remain my time, I want to address something that Representative Henson said, because I want to make sure that everybody in his district who watches C-SPAN understands that your elected official is actually arguing to end the system which says banks can't ignore you as a working-class American, and you've got to have some of them in Dallas, and got to have some of them in California, that, that this representative is actually proposing to end a system that's worked very well, that would allow for a safe and sound investments for working-class small business owners, all these people, Tea Party and all these other people who are arguing that the banks aren't lending and we're bailing out the banks, that your representative in Dallas, Texas is arguing to end the system that says, hey, if you can pay the loan and you're a hardworking American and you're willing to pay your taxes and you're willing to pay by the rules, that you should have access to the financial services sector, that they shouldn't just ignore you and only loan to the rich and the well heeled and the big corporations. That's what you're proposing, Representative Henseling. And let me just say, on this shakedown comment you had, I'll tell you, in my opinion, nobody shakes down the banks better than the members of Congress. You yourself have received over $200,000 in contributions from financial institutions over the last two years. And that goes directly to you keeping your job. That is not what community organizations do. Community organizations sign CRA agreements with these banks to get them to make loans to underserved people, not loans to the campaign that's going to keep them in office and keep them get reelected. So I'd be careful about where you point your finger and accuse people of shakedowns. Taylor, does your organization make its contributors public?